Uh, good afternoon, students. Welcome back again to Lockdown School. Uh, my name is Mr. Chimanda, and today we'll continue with um, our trigonometry uh, that we were doing yesterday. So we are on the topic trigonometry. That's the topic we are on, and we are talking about um, compound angles. And we also have double angles. Double angles. That is what we spoke about uh, uh, yesterday. Yesterday we spoke about, we derived the compound angles and uh, we said we can use our compound angles uh, to derive, to solve, to solve. We can use it to solve equations. We can also use double angles to solve equations. But today we're going to try to uh, do some questions on compound angles. Then uh, tomorrow we'll speak about, we'll, we'll derive double angles from uh, compound angles so that we'll be able to solve equations using these either compound angles or double angles. So yesterday I'm going to write down the double, the compound angles that we know, that we are familiar with, that I spoke about yesterday so i spoke we spoke about the first one which is sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a this is what we spoke about yesterday sine a plus b is equals to sine a cos b plus so Instead of writing another one, sometimes your formulas might be given with a negative sign at the bottom and also a negative sign in the bottom on your formula sheet. So what it simply means is that when you have a negative at the bottom, you must also use a negative. So if you're given sign A minus B, you must also come here and say, okay, if there's a negative B, I'll use a negative. So it's just two formulas in one written as one. The next one, is cos a plus b which is equal to uh cos a cos b minus sine a sine b minus sine a sine b so with this one, or we said if we have a cos and you have a and plus b, the plus here on this one is a negative. So when we are writing it, we write a negative on top. If you want to write it as double, so and I put a negative at the bottom here. So what I'm simply saying is if I have cos a plus b, you see the a, the plus is on top. I'll also come and take cos the what is the sign which is on top here, which is cos a uh, cos b minus sine a sine b. If I have got cos a minus b, then I will have cos a cos b plus sine a sine b, because I'm going to take whatever sign is at the bottom and whatever sign is at the bottom. That is dependent on how you're given the formulas. Then we go to tan. We have tan a plus b, which is equal to tan, tan a plus tan B over one minus tan A tan tan B. Right. So what I'm simply saying is, if I have tan A, I take the two tans and I add them. But remember this negative sign. So when I'm going to combine them, I'm going to because I also mean interested in tan A minus B. Then here it it will also be at the bottom which is, if I use a negative sign, I will come and take whatever is at the bottom, negative sign, because the negative sign is at the bottom here. And here, the negative sign will be like this. So it means I'm going to take the negative sign, negative sign, and positive sign at the bottom. What I'm saying, tan A minus B is equals to tan A minus tan B over one plus tan A, tan B. I've just written them in what? In short. So we can use these to solve equations. We can use these to uh, solve 
identities, right? To simplify identities. Sometimes we're given identities so that we're asked to show from this side to the next side. So we should be able to uh, to use this formula. So we're quickly going to do some uh, questions. I'm going to quickly wrap up this so that we can do some questions. All right. Uh, using our textbook from Siabula, and I'm just going to give some uh, examples that I see I've seen uh, online. Right. We have. It says simplify. It says simplify cos alpha, uh, cos phi, cos seven theta minus sine phi sine seven theta. Right. If it says simplify, what do they mean? They are simply saying, I want. Let's. Can, are we able to write this in simple form? Are we able to get back? But we know our formula, which states that cos A uh, plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. So if we look, is there a similarity? Yes, because there's a negative and a negative. It's only that now my A is 5. And my B is 7, 5. And my A here is 5. And my B is 7, 5. So I can easily combine these two and write them and say, okay, in this format, so this must be equal to cos 5 plus 7, 5. So you can actually see I'm now working in reverse because equal sign simply means that this I can convert it back. To the other side, right? So this now I can come and write it as cos, because uh, five plus seven five is now cos eight five. I have simplified. Then you get your mark. So in that case, you can actually see that I can now move. I can also move from here. I can even simplify this to say cos four theta plus four theta and get back, get and write this down. Right, let's do another example. Another example. This one, let's do it together so that we can see if you get it right. Can you quickly write in the chat section? Can you quickly write in the chat section to so that I can see if you have got it right? I'm just going to give you 30 seconds after writing it down so that we can see if you got it right. It says simplify. Simplify uh, sine 120 cos 60 plus cos 120 sine 60. Let's quickly simplify that. Right? These we're talking about 120 degrees and we're talking about 120 degrees, right? And, and 60 degrees. So if we do this one now, we can quickly say that, OK, I am going to work in reverse. I have, I have, you go on your formula sheets, then you check. We have something that says sine A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus cos B sine A. So I can come and check, okay, what is my A in this case? My A is 120. And what is my B? My B is 60. No, sorry, this is cos A and B here. Yeah. And my A still remains 120 and here it's 60. So if I notice this, I can quickly work in reverse. So it means sine, this is equal to uh, sine 120 plus 60, which is equal to sine 180. Right. 
You can leave it like this, but what is sine 180? That's the question. What is sine one? If you can punch it in the calculator, sine 180 should give you a zero. So this, now you get your final answer because you have simplified this back to the uh, a simplified version. So without even punching this in the calculator, we what we're interested in is this step. Are you able to simplify it back to this step? This step, I want to see this step. And like you just punching it in the calculator. That is what I am. We are most mostly interested in, right? So now let me quickly write another one to see if you have grasped the concept. The next one before we go to solving, the next one says. Um, Sign. No, let's do this one. It says cos theta cos theta minus sine of uh, sine theta sine theta. Uh, this one. We can actually, we know our identity, our double angle, and it says cos the, uh, A. Remember, if there's a negative here, there's always a plus here, right? So the U must always remember, which says uh, cos A cos B minus cos sine A sine B. Now I can see that, okay, this one is my theta, my A is my theta, and my B is my, not theta, and my B is my theta as well, theta and theta, so it's fine. I can now write this back as cos theta plus theta, which is equals to cos, not uh, cos two theta, right? But cos two theta uh, is, a, is a double angle, right? It's a double angle, we shall deal with double angles later on when we get to double angles, right? When we get to what? To double angles. Right. Then we can get now. It says expand. Right? Expand or let me quickly write here. We can get, which says expand. Expand. The following as a double angle, right? We can exp expand sine uh, theta plus 45. So this one we can write it becomes sine theta cos 45, right? Plus cos theta uh, sine 45. Right. Cos theta sine 45. So now here we, we are just going to express uh, 45. Um, uh, this 45, cos, what is cos 45? That is our answer, it's supposed to be half. Sine theta plus half cos theta. You are done. You've expanded. Which you shall later on see when you want to use it to solve our equations or quickly um, find what the value of theta. So here we are still just learning on how to expand, on how to manipulate uh, using the compound angle, right? Uh, Let's go to another one before we go, we go to solving. It says expand tan theta plus 45. Tan theta plus 45. Using our double angle formula, this is equal to tan theta plus tan 45 over one minus tan 
theta tan 45. Tan theta tan 45. Now, we want to know, uh, now we can simplify this and write it as, because tan theta is just theta. What is tan 45? It's one. If you pass it in your calculator, tan 45 is what? It's one. So it's tan theta minus one over. What is tan 45? It's one. So one times tan theta is just, so it's over one minus tan theta. You are done. You have simplified. So you can actually see that simplifying or expanding using your double angle uh, format should not be uh, difficult at all, right? Should not be very difficult. Now, uh, let's quickly do, or let's quickly dwell on how to solve uh, these equations. So I'm gonna quickly uh, rub off. I'm gonna quickly rub off so that we can see how are we able to solve the quadratic, I mean, not the quadratic, the trigonometric uh, equations that involves double angles. Now, I will go and, and say, so, um, so, uh, the equation for values of theta in the range zero is less than theta is less than or equal to one eight. This is whenever you're asked to solve, right? Whenever they ask you to solve, they must give you a range. The range, because remember the graph, uh, we can find the values of theta up to positive infinity, and we can find the values of theta up to negative infinity. So uh, we cannot exhaust all the uh, answers or the solutions that we can get. So the, the, we must just find that the values that are between zero and 180 degrees. So we're going to solve the first one. It says uh, cos 60 plus theta is equal to sine theta. Right. Is equal to what? Is equal to sine theta, which is number two. Would we'll, we'll, I'll just write before I write number two here. It says sine forty-five minus theta is equal to cos theta. So with this one now, we are going to expand using the what? Using the double angle for me. We know the double for cos. It says cos 60 uh, cos theta minus, remember whenever we have a plus there, we get a what? A minus. Minus uh, sine 60 sine theta is equal to uh, sine theta. We have just expanded the what? We have just expanded with this one. Now, what is left now is to take your calculator and punch in your calculator what is cos 60 and what is uh, sine and what is sine 60. So if you come into your calculator, cos 60, you must always make sure that your calculator is in radiate it's in um if you are given in degree format you must also express it at in degrees if you are given if it is given to you in uh if it is given to you in radians you must also express it as radians right so we go to, we go to our calculator we punch in what is cos 60. cos 60 is half right what is sine 60? Right, delete. So it's half cos theta minus, what is sine 60? 
we uh, sine 60 uh, if we read is a root 3 over 2 sine theta is equals to sine theta. It, let me just quickly get a scientific calculator that we can use. Okay, so now I, I do have a scientific calculator. So sine 60 is equals to root 3 over 2. So now I can take this now and send it to that side, right, which is half cos theta minus is equal to sine theta plus root 3 over 2 uh, sine theta. Plus root three over two sine theta. Right, so now I can add these two using your calculator because they are they have the same they have the same base they have the same uh, variable. Right, so now this becomes half cos theta. So here the coefficient is one. So you're going to add one plus this. So you must add what is one plus a root three over two. Can you quickly do that one? I want to also quickly add it on my calculator. Which is equals to one plus root three over two. It gives me uh, two plus root three over two sine theta. I've added the coefficient of this one plus the coefficient of this one. But now we haven't solved yet because what we are interested in is theta. Uh, if you did in grade 11, you have this one that says tan theta is equals to sine theta over cos theta. Right. You have uh, an identity that says uh, tan theta is equals to sine theta over cos theta. So here I can quite quickly come and divide uh, by, uh, by cos, right? So that, so I can come now and divide everything by cos. So here I'm gonna divide by cos theta and I'm gonna divide also by cos theta. So I'll have half is equal to 2 plus root 3 over 2 tan theta. Because why? Here sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. Now I want to make tan theta the subject of the formula. I divide by the whatever is here over two. So if this cancels this and this one I also divide by two plus root three over two. So now I can quickly divide this. So it becomes half divided by uh, two plus root three root three over two. I hope we are doing this together, right? It is equal to tan theta is equal to 2 minus root 3. 2 minus root 3. So for us to find theta now, we just have to oxide tan. So theta is equal to shift tan 2 minus root 3. If you shift to tan 2 minus root 3, shift to tan 2 minus square root of 3, you get 15 degrees. So theta is equal to 15 degrees. And this is the only angle that is there between 0 and 8, 180. I'm just going to quickly come back here and uh, show you the steps. What we did was we expanded cos 60 
uh, plus theta into cos 60 cos theta minus sine 60 sine theta, which is cos sine theta. Then here, uh, I know cos 60 is cos to half and sine 60 is cos to root three over two, right? And uh, here, so I, I, if it's half, I, I, I'm really changing like this. So the next step is I want to group like terms. So by grouping like terms, I've taken whatever sign is here and I've put it to the other side. Then I added the two, uh, the coefficients of the two signs. That's where that's where, where I got two plus root three over two, right? And here I still had half cos theta. But if I divide both sides by cos, the, the only way I'm able to find theta is I, if I get one variable of uh, uh, the trig ratio, which is tan. If I have sign and uh, cos in the same equation, it will be difficult to solve. I would need a special um, uh, treatment for, him, for me to convert from here. But this one is easier because we have uh, this uh, trig um, identity that says tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, right? So it is very easy for us to what? To use. Then now I divide both sides by uh, whatever, I, I divide by cos and by cos, I get tan this side and here the cos disappears. So when I get tan now, I want to make tan theta the subject of the formula. So I divide everywhere by two plus root three over two. So I'm dividing everywhere by it so that I can get one function tan theta is equal to negative two root three. The next step is to shift tan. If I shift tan, I will get um, 15 degrees. So it's, 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 it might look complex, but if you simply follow your identities, because the only identity that I introduced is sine theta over cos theta. I introduced it uh, here. And the other identity that I introduced is this one where I, I expanded. The rest is algebraic manipulation where I'm just putting it to the other side, adding it up so that I get one coefficient, then I divide eventually so that I'm left with tan theta as the subject of the formula. Right? Let's quickly do another one, which is there on top. I am going to quickly wrap this off and we do that one. We're going to do it together. Again. And it is still within uh, the range. I hope you know how to use your quadrants or to draw the graph. Drawing the graph is a bit easier if you if you know how to draw the graph because the graph of sine, the sine graph looks like I'm just going to draw a sketch from 0 to 360. And the, uh, the cost graph starts from there. So if you know how to use this graph or if you know how to uh, implement your quadrants, then you are sorted. But let's quickly do that one, which is sine 45 minus theta is equal to cos theta. So if you punch in your calculator, right, and finding the first value, the first value is known as the principal value. That is the first value. It is known as the principal value. Then the, the rest you have to find them using your, your quadrants or your uh, or your, your graph. But there is a general formula which I'm going to write later on. I think you've done them in grade 11. Now, with this one, I expand. This one becomes sine 45 cos theta minus cos 45 sine theta is equal to cos theta. Right? That's the first step. The next step is I'm going to simplify uh, the, the uh, ratios that have been given, the, the degrees. So sine 45, sine 45 is equal to root 2 over 2. And cos 45 is the root 2 over 2. Okay, we did on the first uh, example, 
we said it's half, which was wrong because I was trying to figure out and uh, find my calculator. But we can, we are actually able to see that. Or oh, this one, it's in, in it's written as one over root two. But one over root two, when you rationalize it, it becomes root two over two. That's why I did one one over two. But I, I forgot to put the square root sign. Right, so this becomes root two over two and root two over two cos theta minus sine theta is equal to cos theta. So we simply. Now the next step is to take whatever with cos to that side, or I can bring this cos here and take this sign to that side. Why? The reason why I will do that is I just want to make my this variable positive. And Lito says I can just take this and put it to that side and this to this side. It, it will still be the same. So now I'll write root 2 over 2 cos theta. This one, if I bring it to this side, minus cos theta is equal to root 2 over 2 sine theta. I've simply taken this to that side. So the way you must take note is you cannot divide by sine and cos, by cos and cos so that to create tan when the, these two are different. Right? If these two are the same, that's when you can only divide. If they are different, then it will be extremely wrong. So in this case, I come here, I'm going to add. So since these are the same uh, variables, I can add the add or subtract their coefficients. So I'm going to subtract their coefficients now. So it becomes root two over two minus one equals. So here I will get negative two plus root two over two. Cos theta is equal to square root of two over two sine theta. Right. If you can see here now, I have cos theta and sine theta. How do I create one variable? I divide everywhere by what? By cos. So I divide everywhere by cos theta and cos theta because I know from the identity that cos theta, sine theta over cos theta gives me tan theta. Right. Then now I can come now. I'm just going to quickly write it here where you are all able to what? To see. So this gives me square root of two over two tan theta is equal to negative two plus root two over two like that. So I want to make tan theta the subject of the formula. So I divide by root two over two. And here I divide by root 2 over 2, which means I cancel these ones. And here I can, because this is a, I can punch it in the calculator. I want to quickly punch it in the calculator, which is uh, negative 2. Negative 2. And you also punch it in your calculator so that we make sure we don't make the same mistake. So it's negative two uh, plus root two over two divided by root two over two. Which is equals to so if I if I divide this tan theta is equal to one minus root two. Right? Tan theta is equals to one minus root two. Then now, um, theta is equal to shift tan one minus root two. Basically, I'm trying to find theta now. So shift tan one minus root two. Shift tan one minus root two is equal to, to negative. So theta is equal to negative 22.5. That is the first one. 
Theta is equal to negative 22 over. But the question now, remember we have been told to find theta between zero, uh, theta and 180. We want to find between zero to 180 degrees. How do we find the other value? I want to show you two ways of finding the other value. I want to quickly. So in this case, for, t, for theta, but in this case, it's fine because uh, for tan, that is the only, this is, because remember, this is uh, negative 22, uh, 0.5, but it is so it is supposed to be between zero and one inch. So this is out of range. This is out of range. So for all the values, if it's ten, if it is ten, we use. Uh, I'm gonna quickly share my screen right now. I'm going to quickly share my screen so that you see. Uh, So these are what we know as general solutions when we are solving for, for theta. You can quickly write them down, right? So what I'm saying is, what it is saying is, if it, if it is sine theta is equal to x, then theta is equal to uh, shift sine x plus k times 360 degrees. Plus k times what? 360 degrees. Oh, theta is equal to uh, 180 minus whatever shift sign, right? So it's whatever shift sign x, right? Plus k times 360 degrees. If it is for, that is if it is for sine. If it is, right, that is if it is for sine. If it is for uh, cos, then it's cos theta is equal to uh, shift cos x plus uh, k times 360 degrees. So these are basically the three uh, general solutions. If we say, if we say general solution, it's, not, it's different from a particular solution. It means we, at the moment we can mod, if I put a two at where a k is, I can find another solution. If I put a three, if I put a four, even if I put a hundred or a million, I can still get a solution that will satisfy this equation. So with this one, it says tan. What we're interested in is tan. So I'm just going to quickly write it down. So tan theta is equal to x and theta Right. If tan theta is equal to x, then theta is equal to shift tan x plus k uh, times 180 degrees. I'm just going to quickly stop sharing. I'm going to stop sharing so that we get you are able to see. So now. This is the general formula. So with this one, it's out of range. If I want to find the other formula, was my shift turn here. So theta, my shift turn was negative 22.5. That is what I got here. Plus 180, the first one, eight. one times 180. What do I get? Take it on my calculator. So I see 180 minus 22.5, which is equal to 157.5. So now this is what I'm interested in because it is now within the range. It is now within the range of uh, the range of what of my uh, equation that I want to solve. If the range was bigger, let's say the range was 360 degrees. I was going to come and say, okay, it is 360 degrees. Here I'm applied by one. My k was one. That's what I did. Now I'm going to say theta. Again, theta is equal to negative 22.5 plus 2 times what? 
times one eight. You pass in the calculator. Then get twenty two point five plus two factor of one hundred eighty, which is equals to three thirty seven point five. And you can actually see that this is also within range if it's under 360. So it means if I expand this and get, go to go further, maybe 540 degrees, I simply have to add a three, a four. If it's if it's a million here, then I'll figure out what my value is until I get a value which is out of range. So in this case, my value for this for this uh, what I was solving is 157. Point five. Right. So I this is basically how we solve um, equations involving the trigonometric uh, function. Trigo, um, I mean compound angles. I, that, that is how we solve. Basically, if they are on their own, then it will be easier to to solve. But if you see that you first you have to expand. After expanding, then uh, you collect like terms. If it means you're going to introduce another identity, the objective is to get one. In this case, the one that I could get was 10. So 10, then I could shift to 10 and get a value. If it's not, if it's out of range, I will use the general formulas that I just share, shared the screen with, or with right now, so that you, you could, uh, um, I mean, find your solutions. So I'm just going to quickly share the screen again so that you, we can see uh, which ones can we, um, questions we can do. Right. I'm just going to quickly go to the question section. Right. So find the general solution. An example, sine 2 alpha is equals to cos alpha. The same thing that we're doing. It's only now that this is a double angle. All right, double angle. So an example is this one. All right. If we can solve, it's the same, what is the similar what we were doing to what we were doing there. All right. So we will continue with a double angle tomorrow and also apply it. Right, so this is the textbook we're using. You can go on exercise four and try to do question number one and question number two, which is a bit similar. But tomorrow we'll do the double angles. Double angles are derived from compound angles. So that is why we first wanted to see how compound angles are manipulated, are, are expanded, and are used to solve. From then on, um, the the what's name the double angles will be very simple will be very simple to 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 utilize and um, work out so thank you very much for coming go and do some exercises if you've got any questions today i did not get any questions if you've got any questions tomorrow please feel free to ask the questions and we will right. Yeah, cost for five. Yeah, I've uh, uh, explained. OK, I was not seeing the questions. I'm just seeing the questions right now. OK, I'll be able to answer them tomorrow. I'm just going to copy all the questions down. Right. OK, thank you very much. Enjoy your day.